Hi everyone, this is Dr. Saida Falafini from Cal Poly Pomona. Now we want to talk a little bit about managing staffing levels or determining staffing levels uh, in the hospitals. And that's especially for time varying demands. Here, when I talk about um, the staff or nurses, or doctors, physicians, technicians, um, housekeeping staff. So um, that's, the, that's the type of resource that we want to be able to manage in this part. And when I talk about, I'm going to talk about a little more about the nurses and doctors. But when I talk about the nurses, I'm not talking about the nurses that are in the inpatient unit, not the nurses in the hospital that are providing service to ICU patients or the patients in the floor or in the step down units. I'm not talking about those. The, the, the nurses or doctors that I want to talk about right now, or I want to plan um, their schedule and their, the number of patients, the number of nurses or patient doctors that we need, are the ones in outpatient. And those are just the doctors that we go. For example, we go to primary care doctors. We just have some difficulty. We just want to see the doctor and just we are with them. We get discharged and we go home. So that's outpatient units. In those scenarios, all of you have had the experience. When you go, again, you you do the registration first. Someone gets your information and puts in the system that this patient is in. Then a nurse is going to call you. The nurse is going to um, um, check your condition, blood pressure, temperature, stop. And then you go again, wait outside. Then the doctor calls you, visits you, and then you're good to go. I mean, either you leave right away or you go to the pharmacy and then after that, you leave. Okay, so that's outpatient units. So I want to talk about how we can deal with number of nurses or number of doctors in these situations. Okay. So obviously, again, we need, um, as you can see, these type of systems, again, are similar to queuing systems. So uh, here I can again say the patients come from outside. They first go to the nursing unit. And here may, I may have two nurses. Let's assume nurse one, nurse two. These are patients. They're coming from outside. And then the patients, after the nurses do the checking, they go sit outside and they wait for the doctors. And we may have, I don't know, one, two, three doctors. Okay. The patients see the doctor and then the patient exits the system. And obviously here, again, I can treat this system as a queuing system. In previous uh, examples, number of beds were considered as servers. Here, number of servers or number of doctors are going to be considered as the servers. And to be able to analyze, again, this queuing system and find out how many nurses or how many doctors I need, I need to find two important data. I need two important data to be able to analyze this queuing system. The first set of data is related to the inter time of the customers or the demand. So that's related to inter time of patients, the rate of the arrival of the patients. And then the second one is related to the service time. The time that it takes for the nurse to provide service to the patient, the time that it takes for the doctor to provide service. So we need to be able to collect this data using historical data in the database. We need to be able to collect uh, information related to data related to interarrival time, because I need to assess by interarrival rate. I also, I need to find data related to service time because I need to specify service rate. And once I know um, these two pieces of information, then I can uh, analyze this queuing system. So when we consider about the arrival um, rate, so in terms of the service rate, this, those service rates are not going to change significantly over time. A nurse is going to take about at on average 30, let's say 10 minutes to see a patient and does the checking temperature, blood pressure stuff. A doctor needs on average, let's say 
30 minutes to see a patient and so forth. Okay, so the service times are not going to change significantly in different times of the day or in the different days of the week. On average, they are about the same. However, the arrival uh, rate is going to change. In an inpatient, uh, in an outpatient unit, the arrival rate may be different in different parts of the day. It may be more in the morning, it may get slower in the middle of the day, and may get more again, goes go higher in the in the evening, in the afternoon and in the evening. Um, it may definitely will vary in different days of the week. It's higher over the weekend, it's uh, maybe a little less during the week. So the rate of the arrival of the patients to these outpatient units is going to change. And to be able to do a better planning for the staff, um, we, it's always recommended that instead of just having one arrival rate for the whole day or one arrival rate for the whole week, it's better to look into different periods of time. So for example, we may have for uh, 24 hours, I may have three periods of eight hours each. And even, we may even go more detail. I may say that, okay, the first four hours in the morning, then the next two hours is different. Then again, uh, the next two hours is different. So maybe in the first four hours, um, maybe um, 10 patients per hour arrive. In the second uh, two hour, in the next two hour, maybe uh, five patients per hour arrive. And in the last two hour, maybe um, eight patients per hour arrive. So if that's the case, then I do want to treat each one of these periods separately because I definitely would need different amount of resources for each one of these periods. And uh, so we, we decide by looking at the historical data, we decide how do we wanna divide time into different periods. Here I divide an eight hour into three periods. Here I divided 24 hours into three eight hour periods. We decide, you have to look at the data, you look at, you have to, look at the rate of arrival of the customers in different days and find out what is the best way to divide the day into different periods because the rate of the arrival of the customers uh, are changing. You have to look at the data of the arrival of customers over different days of the week and then um, decide if every day is the same or some days have more or less uh, patients coming to the system. So um, if that's the case, uh, the method that is used, um, I mean, there is a name for the method, it's called um, sta uh, stationary independent period by period. So which is basically, is nothing complex. It says that uh, consider each period as an independent um, period of time and solve or analyze the queuing system for that period. So then we divide the step down, divide the workday into different periods, two hour periods, four hour period, eight hour periods. You decide deep, given the data, what is the best way to divide the day into different periods. And then for each one of these periods, use an MMS queuing system to analyze that period and to see how many nurses or how many doctors we need for that period, okay? And that's what we call as SIPP. Um, another, um, I mean, a better method um, would be a lag SIPP. What is the lag SIPP? So in the, let's, let's go to an example. So let's assume here I have a four hour period and then a two hour, and then let's say a 
um, about one hour and then another one hour period. Okay, I have looked at the data and I have seen the rate of arrival of the patients are very different in these four periods, which is just one working day, eight hours of working day. Um, I have seen the rate of arrival of patients are very different in, in these four periods and I wanna um, treat each one of them separately. So in the lag SIPP, let's assume the customer, this is in this hour, in a specific hour of the day. Let's assume the customers come to the system and then the customers need to go to the nursing unit. Let's assume it takes 40 minutes at the nursing unit, or just consider this is a doctor, it doesn't matter. Let's assume it takes 40 minutes um, at, the, at the doctor or the nursing unit. And let's assume in this hour, uh, I had two patients per hour. And so when the, when the doctor is done, obviously they are going to look at the patients that are waiting here and they are going to process those patients. Then in the next hour, let's assume 10 patients per hour arrive, okay? So what happens then? When the doctor is done, they are going to look at outside and say, okay, now there's a lot of patients. So they're going to pick the patients one by one and they're going to visit them. However, now since I have 10 patients per hour, uh, I may need more doctors. So maybe I hear I had just one doctor, but here with 10 patients per hour at the second time, maybe this is nine to 10 a.m. This is 10 to 11 a.m. Now between 10 to 11 a.m., I need more than one doctor because now I have received 10 patients per hour. So these patients end up waiting forever if I don't increase number of resources. So maybe at this point, I need to have four doctors for the second hour. Although these patients arrive between 10 to 11 a.m., however, since it takes 40 minutes to visit the patients, it will take almost an hour later till these 10 patients, these, till these 10 patients need to go to the doctor. So they arrive between 10 to 11 a.m. to the healthcare unit but most probably I need to increase number of patients between 11 a.m. afterward. Because if these doctors have been busy with previous patients and it has taken 40 minutes to visit those patients, now, after 40 minutes, they realize that, oh, now we have 10 patients to be seen. So, so the, the, the peak in the arrival happens between 10 to 11 a.m. That's when suddenly we see a peak in the arrival of patients. We go from two patients per hour to 10 patients per hour. So the peak in the arrival of the patients happens between 10 to 11 a.m. But the peak in the um, number of doctors visits happens, let's say, in 11 a.m. afterwards. Because for, for these patients to finally go and be seen by the doctor, it would be 11 a.m. afterward. So that's what we basically call by this lag that as we are planning, don't just say that, oh, between 10 to 11 a.m., 10 patients arrive. So between 10 to 11 a.m., I need to go from one doctor to four doctor. No, that's not correct. Yes, the, suddenly between 10 to 11 a.m., um, 10 patients arrives, but it takes time till these 10 patients finally need to be visited with the doctor. There is a lag, and consider that lag in your planning as well. Most probably, if the time of the visit of a patient by a doctor is 40 minutes, more, most probably after 40 minutes, that's when we need to see a peak in number of doctors or in, in a peak in number of patients that need to be seen by the doctor. Um, and we need to increase number of doctors. And if this service time is longer, definitely we need to consider this lag is even more. 
if the service time is short, it doesn't matter. Um, if it just takes two minutes to go to the doctor, okay, no, no problem. Plan for the same hour. Just say um, 10 patients uh, arrive per hour between 10 to 11 a.m. Suddenly number of patients increases. Yeah, it's okay to increase number of doctors at the same period as well. So increase number of doctors at the same period because these patients would immediately go to the doctor because the doctor takes only a couple of minutes to see the patient. So these patients would with very soon will be transferred to the doctor. But if the time that it takes to see the patients, if the service time with the doctor is long, usually they say if the condition is that it's greater than 30 minutes. If it is greater, the time with the doctor or the time with the server is greater than 30 minutes, then consider that lag in your planning. Then if the patients arrive, if the patients arrive between 10 to uh, 11 a.m., suddenly if the rate of arrival of patients go up in between 10 to 11 a.m., consider this lag and plan for more patients 30 minutes later, not during the same time period. Plan for more doctors 30 minutes later so that then at the right time, we have more doctors to, to address more patients. And what we need to do in step one, similar to the previous method, divide the day into periods and collect the data for each one of them. And then when we have the rate of arrival of the patients in each one of these period, periods of one hour, two hours, like four hours, when we have the rate of arrival of patients in each one of these uh, periods, then we need to shift the rate of arrival based on the service time. So let's 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 consider the service time. So um, if if the in the first uh, four hours, which is let's between eight to twelve noon, if at this time. 10 patients per hour arrive, I shift that based on the service time that I have. If let's assume service time is 40 minutes, then I would say, actually, the rate of arrival of patients between 8.40 and 12.40 is 10 patients per hour. And I plan to have more doctors or more nurses in this time period. So that's basically what lag SIPP means. And the same for other periods as well. And then for each one of these periods, define it as an MMS system. You have the arrival rate, you have the service time, find the number of doctors or number of servers that are needed to, um, to provide a, a reasonable service to the customer. That would be your step three. So what we have done so far, Let's say um, if these are different days of the week. What we have done so far is that we, we have looked at each day. And just for simplicity, I assume each day has been divided into three shifts. And let's assume this healthcare unit is working 24 hours, um, 24 hours all days of the week. So here I have three shifts, each one of them eight hours. And in this, um, what we have done so far with everything we did, we talk about is that we found, uh, for example, for nurses, we found how many nurses I need each, in each one of those shifts. For example, here we found that on Monday in shift one, I need um, five nurses. In shift two, I need four. In shift three, I need five again. We do the same for Tuesday. We look at the arrival of customers, our arrival rate of patients, the service rate. We do the same analysis using the queuing system. We consider each nurse as a server. I, I treat each one of these periods as a separate MMS system. And maybe I found that to be able to provide the service to the customer with a reasonable uh, service time, um, I need to have maybe six patients here, three here, and maybe seven here. And I do the same for each day. And let's assume for the first shift, I realize, oh, I need 
eight patients here and I need maybe, I don't know, nine here and I need maybe five again here and so forth. And I'm just making all that, maybe 10 here and 11 here, okay? So these are the number of nurses I need in each one of these time slots or in each one of these shifts, shifts or in, in each one of these time periods. That's what I can identify by queuing theory. However, if I want to know, if, if I'm in a systems engineer, I also need to identify the scheduling of the staff, either nursing staff or the doctors or the housekeeping staff or the technicians. I need to also identify their scheduling. So far, all I have said is that I need this number of nurses at each day in shift one. But if I define the scheduling of the, sh of the nurses, what I need to tell them is that three of you have to start working on Monday. And let's assume in this hospital or in this healthcare unit, um, each nurse or each doctor has to work for five days. So if I want to identify and uh, specify the schedule of the nurses, then what I have here is not enough because here it just says how many nurses we need per day, but who is going to come which day for how many days they are going to continue working, that's still unknown. And that's what, what I need to identify. And that's what I can identify with using um, linear programming. Another tools in operations research or